Good day everyone! We are going to talk about identifying the different random sampling technique. This is commonly utilized in research, especially among senior high school students. First, let's define population. Population, the set of all possible values of a variable. Or, ito yung kabuuan ng magiging respondents mo. Total population o kabuuan. Next is sample. It consists of one or more data drawn from the population. It is a subset of population. For example, yung isang buong classroom, class of grade 11 STEM knowledge, and then that is composed of 50 students. So, yung 50 students is a population. Pero pag sinabi nating sample, kukuha ka lang doon sa 50 students. Let's say 15 students, so yung 15 yun, yung sample. Yung 50, that is the population. Next is random sampling. It is a sampling method of choosing representatives from the population, wherein every sample has an equal chance of being selected. Accurate data can be collected using random sampling techniques. Mas okay itong random sampling to choose your respondents para maiiwasan ang pagiging bias sa pagkuha ng respondents para maging fair yung pagkuha natin. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng random sampling, the probability sampling and the non-probability sampling. So, sa probability sampling, the sampling techniques that involve random selection. Sa non-probability sampling naman ay the sampling techniques that do not involve random selection of data. Isa-isahin natin. First, the different types of random sampling. Ang unay ang simple random sampling. Common na ginagamit natin. A simple random sampling technique is the most basic random sampling wherein each element in the population has an equal probability of being selected. As you can see in the illustration, random yung mga naseselect. So, hindi mo alam yung magiging respondent mo. Madalas gamitin ang simple random sampling sa graded recitation. Bali, ilalagay yung pangalan sa one-fourth na papel, isa-shuffle siya at random student ang matatawag para fair. Hindi alam kung sino yung mauuna. Makikita nyo dito sa illustration from the population, so, ang pag-select ng respondents ay hindi nyo alam kasi nga randomly selected. So, that is the simple random sampling. Isa pa sa example nito ay sa pagtaya sa loto ng nanay o tatay nyo. Hindi nila alam yung number na mapapasama sa mananalo, kung anong number yung lalabas. Isa pa yung parafal sa mga events na pwede rin ma-apply yung simple random sampling. Next is systematic random sampling. This can be done by listing all the elements in the population and selecting every kid element in your population list. This is equally precise as the simple random sampling. It is often used on long population lists to determine the interval to be used in identifying the samples to who will participate in the study. Use the formula K equals capital N representing population over N representing sample size. So, paano ginagamit yung systematic random sampling? For example, yung magiging respondent mo sa research nyo ay grade 10 students. So, lahat ng grade 10 students kukunin nyo at ililista nyo by alphabetical arrangement, mapababae o lalaki. So now, ang gusto mo lang kunin ay 60 respondents lang. Let's say yung kabuuan ng grade 10 ay 600 students. So sobrang dami nun. It takes time na mapapasurvey ka sa 600 na respondents. So ang kukunin mo lang ay 60. So may hirapan ka kung paano mo iselect yung 60. So sabi nga dito, by listing all the elements, so ililista lahat ng pangalan ng grade 10 students. Yung 600 grade 10 students and then using this formula, 600 divide 60, so ano yung sagot doon? That is 10. So every 10, ibig sabihin yung pagkuha nyo ng respondent is by 10th na respondent. So yung pang number 10, number 20, pang number 30, pang number 40, pang number 50, o pang number 60, 
So, every 10. So, gaya dito sa illustration, every third from the population start siya. Sa 3 and then 6 at 9. So, every third dun sa population. So, ganun yung systematic random sampling. Ayun yung kaibahan niya kay simple random sampling. Next, yung stratified random sampling naman. It is a random sampling wherein the population is divided into different strata or divisions. The number of samples will be proportionally peak in each stratum. That is why all strata are represented in the samples. For example, yung entire population hinati sa apat na grupo. Sa apat na grupo, pipili ka ng equally numbers. For example, sa unang grupo, kuha ka ng isa. Sa pangalawang grupo, kuha ka rin ng isa. Sa pangatlong grupo, kuha ka ng isa. At sa pangapat na grupo, kuha ka rin ng isa. So, ganito yung stratified random sampling. So, from the population, hinati-hati mo sila. Depende kung ilang groups. Let's say, yung inaaral mo is yung pananaw ng tao sa early teenage pregnancy. Let's say, yung unang grupo is edad 13 to 15. Yung pangalawang grupo ay edad 16 to 18. Yung pangatlong grupo ay edad 20 to 30. At yung pangapat na grupo, 30 to 40. So, pag nag-group na natin, dun tayo kukuha ng respondents. Ito naman yung kinaibahan ng stratified random sampling. Next ay ang cluster sampling. It is a random sampling wherein population is divided into clusters or groups and then the clusters are randomly selected. All elements of the clusters randomly selected are considered the samples of the study. Ngayon naman ay hahatiin nyo yung population, yung clustered population. Depende kung ilang cluster yung gagawin. Ang pagkuha ngayon ay by group. For example, dito sa illustration, may 6 na clusters so yung kinuha mong cluster ay yung 5, 6 at 11, 12 so lahat ng kasama sa cluster 5, 6 ay magiging respondents pati na rin sa cluster 11, 12 di kagaya kanina sa stratified na lahat ng grupo ay kukuhaan mo ng respondents dito sa cluster sampling Clinaster natin yung buong population. So, kung mapili mo ay yung cluster 5, 6 at cluster 11, 12, lahat ng kasama doon sa cluster ay magiging respondents. This is some examples of different types of random sampling. First is the simple random sampling. First example is, at a birthday party, teams for a game are chosen by putting everyone's name into a jar and then choosing the names of random for each team. Next example is, a restaurant leaves a fishbowl on the counter for diners to drop their business cards. Once a month, a business card is put out to award one lucky diner with a free meal. Last example, at a bingo game, balls with every possible number are placed inside a mechanical cage. The caller rotates the cage, tumbling around the balls inside. Then, she selects one of the balls at random to be code, like B12 or O65. Next examples, systematic random sampling. First example, a barangay health worker asks every four house in the village for the ages of the children living in those households. Next example, in a classroom, the teacher selects the fifth student in each row at random. Last example, Katie can give a survey to every fourth customer that comes into the movie theater. Next is stratified random sampling. First example, a test addressing physical development over time could use the student body of a school as a population. Stratify it by grade and then take random samples from each grade. Next example is opinion surveys on specific political issues commonly stratify according to respondents' party affiliation or lack thereof, then take samples from each. Last example, a market survey by a company interested in branching into a new market might choose a population of people using similar products, stratify it by brand and sampling from each stratum. 
Cluster sampling examples. First example is that a test of the effectiveness of a new curriculum could begin by dividing an area by school district, then choosing a school or set number of schools at random and sampling students from each. Next example, a study in the wake of a natural disaster might divide a population into clusters according to region, then choose a random cluster or clusters to begin establishing the disasters overall effect. Last example, a company interested in brand penetration may lock the resources to survey an entire city. Instead, they could divide the city into clusters based on area. Choose clusters at random and test the popularity of their brand. This is also how some mail campaigns are conducted. So, may tinatawag tayong non-probability sampling. First ay ang convenient sampling, wherein the researcher gathers data from nearby sources of information, exerting minimal effort. Convenience is being used by persons giving questionnaires on the streets to ask the passerby. So, ito yung malapit lang sa'yo. For example, yung kapitbahay nyo na mabilis mo lang mapuntahan. Kadalasan, may mga makikita tayong nagpapasurvey, for example, sa mga restaurant. Nagpapasurvey sila para malaman yung level of satisfaction ng customer sa service ng group. Sa convenience sampling, pinapakita sa illustration, halimbawa, ito yung researchers. Then, ito yung mga possible respondents. Ngayon, yung kukunin niya lang ay yung pinakamalapit sa kanya. Yung pwede niyang puntahan agad, hindi yung pupunta pa siya sa ibang lugar. Next is snowball sampling or chain referral sampling. It's defined as a non-probability sampling technique in which samples have traits that are rare to find. This is a sampling technique in which existing subjects provide referrals to recruit samples required for a research study. Bali, for example, yung researcher yung gusto niyang study hanggat hindi niya nakukuha yung gusto niyang result dun sa study niya, kukuha siya na kukuha ng respondent. Kunyari, dito sa dalawa, parang hindi pa siya satisfied sa results, magdadagdag siya. Once na nagdagdag siya at di pa rin siya satisfied dun sa result, kukuha pa rin siya ng another respondents. Hanggang sa ganyan na karami yung respondents. So, ganyan yung snowball sampling. Or chain referral sampling is defined as a non-probability sampling technique in which the samples have traits that are rare to find. Next is quota sampling. Sample units are fixed for convenience but certain quotas are given to interviewers. This design is specially used in market research. Researchers choose these individuals according to specific traits or qualities. Gaya sa illustration, halimbawa, nakafocus ka lang sa mga lalaking above 50s. Kukunin mo lang from the population yung mga respondents ng mga male na above 50s. So, that is the quota sampling. Another is the volunteer sampling. Sample units are volunteers in studies wherein the measuring process is painful or troublesome to respondent. Ito ay kusa na respondents. Kumbaga, they are willing. Kusa sila na nag-volunteer na maging respondents mo, ganun ang volunteer sampling.